Hey there guys, this is Rick Amsler or Ricker Ticker from the 405th.com and I'm going to show you how I make models using polystyrene foam. Okay guys, here's some of the things you're going to want to have if you're going to work with a polystyrene foam in order to make a gun prop or some other type of prop. You're going to want an exact, a regular old X-Acto knife for any side, type of details that you're going to work with and one of the two different types of extending knives. These are important because you can extend the blade to the full depth of the polystyrene foam in order to cut out your model. That will become very important down the line, I'll guarantee it. You can get your replacement blades for these. I, I go through about two or three blades on one model, so you can find these at just about any hobby or craft store or any like Home Depot, Lowe's, or Menards that you might have nearby. Some of the extra tools that you might want to have is a glue gun because sometimes it's necessar necessary to cut the main model apart in order to achieve greater detail. And then you can glue them back together fairly easy with a regular glue gun. And then some details are easily achieved through a um, soldering iron or soldering gun. The first thing you're going to want to find when you're working or planning on working with a polystyrene foam is that you're going to want to find some image or schematic or blueprint to base your model off of. For me, I try to find either given blueprints, either put out by the company who created the original model, or a wireframe, or a, a reliable blueprint like um, Andrew Cook or the DFT, the Frontline Trooper, he, he does a lot of polystyrene foam modeling he would be a good source to find uh, schematics and blueprints. But what you're going to want to do with these is you're going to use these to either print off or base your dimensions off of. I usually print these off at about a four, pa four page length depending on the model. So for an AR it would be four pages by two pages so four pages long, two pages down I guess and then I would lay it out on top of the polystyrene foam so take your pages, lay them down on the foam and cut them out you should end up with a piece looking very similar to your design with one major, I guess, difference mainly being that the design is a block so now we move on to detailing you're going to want to outline just where most of your details actually lay down that way you'll have an accurate idea of where to put details in this case I'm doing the upper ammo counter receiver gun barrel this allows me to make sure I know exactly where this particular section of the gun, gun lies. So, I don't have any trouble. Now I'm going to move on to this lower underhand hand grip here. For that, I need some placing. Just some dot line placing usually helps for this step. Now the other other thing you can do here is actually cut the piece off while it's laying on the model. This will give you a small cut line and you can use that for making your mark. Or you can cut the piece off entirely, which I plan on doing with this. I plan on cutting this top section off and this lower section off in order to be able to accomplish more detail. Once here, you now have your base model, and that concludes this little section of the tutorial for making a base model. Okay, so here's my current build progress on the Halo 4 AR. It's about one 
a quarter, I guess, of the way into the detail process. I have this upper barrel section mostly completed. Uh, I've got to take it down to the table drill and do some of those details with that next. Got a little bit of sanding right on some of this to do yet with some fine detail sanding. I'm getting down onto the grip section next and I'll pick you back up when I complete that. Okay, now we're about um, about a third of the way into the detail process. So you can see I'm starting to get some of the small, fine details into this build. But I still have quite a ways to go. But this is where it starts getting a little bit tricky because there's some stuff you might want to do with regular craft foam rather than just cutting it out with the polystyrene. That works. Then there's accessories like having an actual flashlight rather than just carving one. Um, that, that's the way I've chosen to do this. It, it makes a much better prop. But that's where we are. Now, as you can see here, I actually ended up doing um, craft foam for the grip of the assault rifle. This turned out to actually be a much easier way of going about actually accomplishing the grip as the angles and the curves were incredibly difficult. But in the end, the grip turned out, it, it's unnoticeable from the overall impact of the model. You can't tell that it's a different type of foam, basically. Now when you get into some of the finer details, it's, it's a lot easier to work with a lot of this if you basically draw the entire schematic or side of the gun onto the unfinished sections. This way it's easier to keep yourself from messing up or give you a area of, um, how would you put it? error or variability so that if you do make a mistake while you're drawing it in it's easier to correct that mistake than if you were actually already cutting into it. Now whenever you get down to the painting of your polystyrene foam model you need to keep an eye in mind that this is actually a styrofoam model that will dissolve if you use spray paint and you don't want this to happen. What you'll want to do first is either find an appropriate paint or spray paint that can either be that is marked that it can be placed or painted onto a polystyrene or foam type model or you're going to want to get some acrylic hand paints. Acrylic hand paints can achieve very similar colors and te textures if you will for your model. So, as you can see in this case, for the railgun that I did a while back, I painted it entirely using acrylic paints. As this is a very easy thing to do, this is how I decided to leave it and skip trying to spray paint it. But when you get down to needing spray paint, if you need a bright silver or a, or a texture that you can only get through a spray paint, like a hammer texture, then you might need to do your spray paint. For this, you're going to want a nice heavy coat of primer, which is, in this case, the acrylic paint. You're going to want to use one color for the entire model. A light gray, a white, or a dark gray are best for gun models. But one of the things you're going to want to watch out for is if you don't get a heavy enough, if you don't get a heavy enough um, layer of acrylic on there, the model will dissolve when it gets that spray paint. If this starts to happen, you're going to want to dry that spray paint up as quickly as possible. Put another layer of acrylic on it, put a little bit of Bondo on, just paint again. You should be ready to go. Well guys, I hope you've enjoyed my video. Um, like, subscribe, 
Tell me what you think in the comments. Uh, this is Ricker Ticker or Rick Amsler from Amsler Armory. I'll see you next time. Like my Facebook page, Amsler Armory on Facebook. That's where I do some armoring stuff. I put any progress on my props or helmets or anything else I might be working on. Okay, I have now got the, all the details etched in and I ha now have a primer coat set on both the handle and the blade. I would also like to give a shout out to Ward Levins or Halo and Destiny News on YouTube. He's part of the Spartan program and he does some pretty neat, neat stuff. You guys should check him out.